Good afternoon, Mount Peace members, friends, and visitors. Welcome to Bible study. So glad that we get to study God's word together once again. You know, we have been walking through scriptures that really focus on women because March is Women's History Month. So maybe you can remember some of the women that we've featured or that we've studied in the month of March. So I want you to think about those women. I want to know if you remember any of those women's names. Let's see. Do you remember who we focused on in the first week when we were thinking about Women's History Month? What about the second or third week? Well, it's okay. If you can't remember the names of all of those women, then that's why it's a good thing that all of our Bible studies for noonday are live streamed. <laughs> so that's all right. But Women's History Month is coming to an end. It's coming to a close. And so we're going to focus on one more woman in Women's History Month. Women's History Month, March 2022. On this afternoon, I want us to look at Hosea chapter 3. So if you have your Bible, would you please turn it to Hosea chapter 3 because we're still in Women's History Month and we're going to look at another woman, all right? And I hope that I've chosen women that maybe you haven't spent a lot of time with. And if I have, then thank God for that. Um, if I haven't, then maybe you will go on an exploration even after this Women's History Month, to locate more women in the Bible who really teach us more about faith, who teach us more about courage, boldness, and really introduce themselves in bold ways, all right? So Hosea chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, we're going to focus on this idea, guilty as Gomer. Guilty as Gomer. How many people have heard of the woman called Gomer in the Old Testament? All right, so in this book, this minor prophet by the name of Hosea, we're going to learn more about this woman called Gomer, and we're going to focus on guilty as Gomer. So let's look. Hosea chapter 3, we're only, only going to focus on three verses, okay? I have the New International Version here, but whatever version you have is fine. Hosea chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, guilty as Gomer. Listen to this. The Lord said to me, go show your love to your wife again, though she is loved by another man and is an adulteress. Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they have turned to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. So I bought her for 15 shekels of silver and about a homer and a lethic of barley. Verse three, then I told her, you are to live with me many days you must not prostitute or be intimate with any man, and I will behave in the same way toward you. So, guilty as Gomer. We can already see in this text that Gomer was a woman who was told by Hosea, her husband, not to be a prostitute or to be intimate with any other man. So then what does that tell us that she was guilty of? She was guilty of, you got it, promiscuity. This woman, Gomer, though she was supposed to be faithful to her husband, she was not. So again, we're focusing this afternoon on the idea of guilty as Gomer. Guilty as Gomer. Gomer, she was a promiscuous woman. The Bible tells us that. And then she became an adulterous woman. She was promiscuous by choice. So you see, in this Women's History Month, I could have focused on some of the women that we're more familiar with, perhaps, like right now, instead of focusing on this type of woman, why not focus on Mary in this Women's History Month? She was the mother of Jesus. Some people would say, why focus on Gomer? Why not focus on, in this Women's History Month, on Ruth? Ruth was a loyal daughter-in-law. There's a book of the Bible that is attributed to Ruth. Why not focus on someone like Elizabeth? She was the mother of John the Baptist. In this Women's History Month, why look at a woman like Gomer when you can look at, Dr. McCoy, um, Hannah? After all, Ham Hannah was a promise keeper. So in this Women's History Month, sometimes we focus on women who are influential in positive ways. 
You know, you may have read or seen something posted or even on the news about women that you would more likely, you know, like to be like or you would like your daughters to be like or your aunts, your uncles. They're more like that woman. So we focus on those type of women. And that's not a bad thing. But I want us to know that there are women in the Bible that we should focus on as well because God has something to say through their stories. So no, we're not going to focus on those other women. We're going to focus on Gomer because Gomer is the symbol of spiritual adultery. So when we think about adultery, we know that to be when a person who is married is unfaithful to their spouse. Well, did you know that there's something called spiritual adultery? Yes, and that is when God's people are unfaithful to God. That is when we who have said that we're going to follow in the way of Jesus Christ and we want to be like Jesus, we start to behave in an opposite way of the way that we should. And so then we are being unfaithful to God. So Gomer is a symbol of spiritual adultery and God uses her this story as a shocking visual aid. Sometimes when people hear this story, they're thinking to themselves, my goodness, there's a woman in the Bible. The Bible talks about, and even in uh, one translation, calls her, talks about a woman of whoredoms. So you see, for some people, that's pretty shocking language, a woman of whoredoms. But God used the prophet Hosea's relationship with Gomer as a lesson. And in today's time, some of us are guilty as Gomer because we have participated in spiritual adultery. So God's purpose for Hosea's marriage was to confront Israel with its sin of unfaithfulness. So the Israelites were being unfaithful to God. And so God is using this marriage to confront Israel, right? Because they are not behaving in ways that please God. So then... I want to share with you as we think about guilty as Gomer, I want to share with you a couple of things so that we can really have a clear understanding of what spiritual adultery looks like. Some people are married and they would say, I have never been um, guilty of adultery. Well, have you been guilty of adultery when it comes to the spiritual side of who you are and who you're supposed to be? I tell you, my brothers and sisters, some of us, are guilty as Gomer. When Israel, when they chose to be unfaithful to God, they were Gomer. So these scriptures reveal, even though they were unfaithful to God, how God still took care of Gomer. And I tell you, it's a blessing that whenever we do those things, say those things, behave in those ways that are contrary to God, that God still takes care of us when we are Gomer. So how did God take care of Gomer? Well, I wanted to show, share a few things uh, with you. The Bible says in verse 1, you see that the Lord said to Hosea, what? Go show your love to your wife again, though she is loved by another man and she is an adulteress. So the first thing that we can see is that even though believers could be as guilty as Gomer, God shows love and takes care of Gomer by showing her love again. Showing her love again. So the Israelites, they fell short and God is still showing his love to them. So even though she fell short, Gomer fell, falls short, Hosea shows love again. She was loved by another man. She was an adulteress, but love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods. So if we were to look at Hosea chapter 4, what we would find is that Israel had a list of sins. They just did all kinds of things that was not pleasing to God. They were unfaithful. Um, they didn't show kindness. They didn't show the knowledge of God. If you read uh, chapter 4, they were swearing. They, they uh, committed murder. They were uh, people full of deception. They were stealing. They were guilty of sexual vice. Um, even their leadership, their priests and their prophets, they were corrupt. And so because of all of these things, their drunkenness and idolatrous uh, worship, they were those who had sunk so low that it became shameful. It was shameful, shameful before the Lord. They loved all of their evil deeds more than they loved God. But what we're seeing in verse 1 is that God is going to love Gomer 
is going to love the Israelites even amid their disrespect. So God shows his love again. And aren't you glad that God shows love even again when we mess up? That's why we shouldn't walk around with our heads hung low when we do bad things. What we should do is pray to God to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and then give glory to God saying, God, I praise you and I thank you. You know, sometimes we say you don't understand my praise. Well, your praise should be understood as God has loved me. God loved the, the, God's love protects me. That's why I praise God. God's love provides for me. That's why I praise God. God's love forgives. God loves, God's love lifts me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. God's love lifted me. And I hope you're allowing the love of God to lift you even now, no matter what you may be dealing with. So Gomer is taken care of by the love of God. So I wanted to share that with you, but let's keep looking at this. The other thing we see in verse 2, the Bible says that Hosea bought her for 15 shekels of silver and about a homer and a lethic of barley. So this shows us that taking care of Gomer includes not only showing love, but covering the cost. Covering the cost. Hosea is going to God or listening to God and God is saying, Hosea, I want you to cover the cost. But I believe that I would be thinking, but God, look at what Gomer has done. And you want me not only to show her love, but you want me to go ahead and cover the cost. But perhaps this was going to be the last payment that was ever going to be made on behalf of Gomer. Perhaps Hosea was about to pay it all. And isn't that what Jesus did for us? Showed us so much love that that love acted. The Bible doesn't say for God so loved the world and that's it. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. There is an action behind that. So that's what Hosea is supposed to be doing. So this is what's happening is that there's going to be a moving forward. There's going to be reconciliation, but it costs something. And we ought to praise God not only for the way that God provides and protects and lifts and all those things, but the fact that God acts on our behalf. The Bible is showing that, hey, even though we do what we do, right? God covers the cost. And I tell you, with as high as things are now, you know, gas is, you know, the price of gas. You know, we're talking about inflation. You know, um, when we think about the price of food, you're spending the same amount of money but getting less product, right? Oh my goodness, God is covering the cost of something, right? And I thank God that God's bank account, if you will, never runs dry. Don't you thank God for that? Absolutely. So taking care of Gomer, we're guilty as Gomer, but God, what? God loves, God covers the cost, and then God establishes order. Look at verse three. The last verse there tells us, then I told her, you are to live with me, you know, for many days. You must not be a prostitute. You must not be intimate with any other man. We see that, right? I read that before. And then um, Hosea is going to behave in the same way towards Gomer. So Hosea declared Gomer's days of promiscuity are coming to an end. Those days are over. The cost has been paid and establishing order is necessary. So then there's not going to be any more indiscriminate mingling, right? And so Gomer is going to know that, yes, you have been guilty, but you belong to Hosea. So then this is an encouraging, as we look, we're looking at this woman, it's encouraging in the sense because now she can make a choice to no longer mingle with all of those things that she's been guilty of in the past. So the question for us today is, hey, are we going to continue to mingle with those things which are contrary to God? What company are we going to keep? We're in the Lenten season. Well, the Lenten season is going to come to an end. But that doesn't mean that the things that we have learned during the Lenten season have to come to an end. So then I have to ask myself, okay, so God loves me. Okay, so God has paid it all. Okay, I count up the cost. Okay, God has done those things. And now God should be establishing order in my life and I should be following that order. Okay, so now it's time to set some things straight. You know, God is saying, hey, you are my people. You will be my people and I will be your God. 
What does that mean for you in 2022? That's where we are now, my brothers and sisters. We're in a season of saying, as we're studying God's word together, as we're growing together in Jesus Christ, what does it mean to you in 2022? When the study is over, when the Sunday morning worship experience is over, what does it mean to you in 2022? So no God is like our God. Our God is all powerful. Our God is, is all knowing. Our God is present everywhere at the same time. Have we really decided that although we've been guilty of some things, have we really decided to belong completely to God? Or are we going to commit spiritual adultery to where God says we belong to God, but we live like we belong to darkness? I proclaim that we are children of light. And we need to continue to walk in that light. So let's pray to God right now, Mount Peace, for help. Dear God, thank you so very much for this lesson as we consider being guilty as Gomer. God, we thank you for this woman's life. We thank you for the life of every woman on this month that we're, we've looked at. God, may we continue to grow because of their stories. I pray, God, that you will give us the courage, give us the know-how, give us the desire to truly not just be children of light, but to walk in the light. God, we thank you for Pastor Terry. We thank you for every member of the Mount Peace Baptist Church. We ask that you continue to, to grow us in love, grow us together as we remember that we belong to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Amen. God bless you, Mount Peace friends and visitors. May you have a great lunch. May you continue to walk in the light and may you hold fast to your Lenten sacrifice. It's not over yet. But it's coming. But you know what? Some of those things you're going to want to hold on to because it's helping you to grow. So God bless you. Go in peace and have a great day.